Susanna has been called all sorts of things in the course of Methodist history, if you like, her, the immortal mother, the mother of the Wesleys, the mother of Methodism. She was uh, undoubtedly a remarkable woman. I mean, thankfully, the family did write copious letters uh, one to another, and that gives us so much rich evidence about um, how they related, what they thought of each other. Now, Susanna um, took it upon herself, really, to, to educate the children, to bring them up in their faith. I mean, obviously, Samuel had an important role in all of that. But Susanna uh, never shirked from her responsibilities. And she saw her, a re almost her reason for being on this earth was to, to bring these children up as well as she possibly could. She, she developed a sort of what we now call like a home school, really, around her kitchen table. And all the children, um, from the, the, the time they could speak, were, were put to their lessons in the kitchen. Even the girls. Now, at that time, in the early 18th century, um, girls didn't, didn't really have an education like that. They were, learnt, they were taught to sew and to be good wives and mothers. From, from the minute they could speak, they were, they were taught their, their alphabet and expected to learn it within a day. She thought they were, you know, two of them spent a day and a half and she thought they were terribly slow and backward to be doing that. So she had very quite, quite high standards. And she would sit them all down around the table um, and t teach them their letters, but also teach them their faith, teach them rudimentary geography and history. I mean, it was quite a wide sort of curriculum that she developed. They were required to say um, certain prayers, to, to recite the Lord's Prayer as soon as they were able to, to pray for, for their parents, to pray for their siblings, um, to pray for the household. Um, and, and then when they were a bit older, they would read scripture um, before they came downstairs, even for breakfast. Um, and the older ones would help the younger ones. And there was, there was a real sort of um, method, really. That word method and discipline is, is vital to this whole story. She, she would also take an hour every day for her own personal devotions and the family knew they were not to disturb her. So she taught them the importance, by example if you like, of, of their own devotional life, um, of praying and of reading scripture and of actually trying to think through their theology. She also wrote quite a lot of sort of theological ideas down in letter form, particularly for John and Charles um, and, and for others of the family as well. I mean, she, she was quite a woman, really, really well ahead of her time. You know, we could argue that Methodism began here in this house because I think the influence of that methodical upbringing uh, did, did actually, you know, influence John quite significantly in his life.